Okay, Joe, thanks for the question. Uh, your, your question was, is you want to create a, a GSUM channel in Ray Studio 2 with your data, and you want to um, end up using that not only in the test that you, you know, you're looking at right now, but we want to work on it and, and create it where we can open up that math channel on all tests that, we, uh, that, that you open from then on. So this will be just a, a quick talk about not necessarily the GSUM channel itself for how you, what is it, how you use it, but rather math, math channels in Ray Studio 2 analysis and how to, to set it up and, uh, and then of course how to, to, to fine tune it to make sure it's working with, the, with your, your channel names and then uh, take it from uh, the test you're working in and take it over to the, to the general tab, which is uh, then set it up for, for being applied to any test you ever open from that day forward. So, so the first thing is, is typically what we're gonna, you know, what most people do is they use their GPS lateral acceleration and their GPS longitudinal gener uh, channel as far as combining those two and cr creating what we call the, the GSUM or the combined GSUM channel. We'll talk about that a little bit, but so I've got those up here on my screen. I've got, I've just got a speed trace at the top. I've got uh, lateral Gs and longitudinal Gs uh, in the middle and at the bottom. And then what we do is everything we're going to do here, of course, is, is at the, is at the uh, math channels function. And, and here's the icon here. I'm just going to click on the icon and open this up. And this is the, the math channels dialog box. And when you, if you've loaded Race Studio and you haven't built any math channels, it should look something like this. You you probably won't have any built yet in the list, which is right here. And then the the uh, there's a general tab, and then there's a test you have open. I suggest we do all of this work in the test we have open because then you can test against you know real data, make sure it's reading out correctly, and all the scalings are right, and all the different things we're going to talk about here real quickly. Uh, but you can't just come in and just write a formula, right? So the we have a general tab that's right next to the to the test name itself. I'm going to go ahead and click on that now. And what you see is the um, we have there are some canned some some default AIM math channels that come with the, with the software. And you know some of these you might not use very often, but GSUM is one of the ones you do. If yeah, I've heard from some users that when they get to the general tab, they don't have any. Either they've been cleared out or they didn't load correctly or, or whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete these and show uh, a user that's watching this later that if, uh, if that list is not there, then we can, we can, uh, we can repopulate that. So I'm going to highlight uh, the top one like I have here, you know, shift and click on the bottom one. Let's you know, highlight them all and I'm going to delete those. And uh, do you want to delete the selected math channels? And yes, I do. Okay, so now I have no math channels either under the general tab or under the test I have open, right? So, so uh, general tab, if that's where yours is, or you want to reset everything, there is a button down here down below. It says uh, you can import a set if somebody had emailed you a set. Uh, I, if you contact me at roger at aimsports.com, I've got an entire set of uh, math channels that are, that are uh, importable. I've got a spreadsheet that talks about all the different things with them. Uh, I can email that to anybody that wants that. So uh, we can uh, export ones you already have built. That's what I've done to create those that set that I was just talking about. And then there's a default aim set. And that's what we're going to reload right now. So we make sure we're in the general tab. And I'm going to click on the default aim set. This is a very, very important dialog box that we need to make sure that we, we, we take a look at and see. So what, um, what it does here is, is it, let me, let, me, let me turn a little spotlight on. What this box does, and if we read it, importing a new set, new channel set will overwrite the existing one. Save the existing export function if you want to use it again later. Uh, with, with the export function. Continue with the import. What it's saying is, boy, if I had any math channels already in this list under the general or the lap, whichever one you have open, and you go to do this import, either importing the default aim set or importing one that uh, a friend has shared with you or the one that we that we uh, share freely here from aim, it will overwrite the set that you already have. It does not append to, it overwrites. So this is, a, this is an important box. Make sure you read this. If you don't have anything, that's fine. Uh, if you're going to import it into the general tab, you know, it, it will override it. If you're, if, uh, if that's a problem, make sure you open up a test that has no tests, uh, no math channels in it, import it into there. And then we'll follow some steps. We're going to show you in a minute how to move them from test to, from a test to the general tab and back and forth. So in my case, in this, in this particular case, we do not have uh, any, any files we're worried about overriding. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on and say yes under the general tab. 
So what it's done is it's brought the, the math channels, the aim default set in here. And what we're gonna wanna work with, uh, your question was how do I set up my G, G sum channel and make it work and then how to make it work in every test that I open. That's the, that's the general uh, question here. So I have, I've, here it is. It's, uh, it's named aim under bar G under bar sum. And uh, since it's in the general tab, what I like to do is, is always copy it into a test, an open test. And then we can work with it there, make sure it's working correctly. Our testing of channels and all that stuff works really well in there. So I'm gonna copy this over into the test. Got kind of an, a unique, interesting way of doing this and uh, it, it works really well in our software. So highlight this, the math channel you want and then you come down here and, and you click on the add. And what it does is it takes that channel, a copy of that channel and puts it here into this, what I call the cut copy paste box. And then we go ahead and, and now select the open test and then we paste it into the open test. Now I can go ahead and work with this and it's gonna actually use all the channels that we have available from your test and, and make sure it's gonna work correctly. We can scale it, we can do all the different things we, want, we might want to do uh, based on the data that we're working with. And we're, we're gonna do this a couple times and then we're gonna look at it and bring it up on the screen, make sure it's all right. And then we're gonna copy it back into the, into the general tab and have it available later. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a different name since we're gonna modify it make sure it's highlighted and then these these little three little ellipse buttons if we click on those we can come in and let's just take away the aim underbar part and just we're just going to call it g sum and uh, click on okay okay and that'll help when we go to actually transfer it back to the general tab where we uh where we have the aim g sum still there now here are the here are the important parts first thing i want to do is fix the formula make sure it works and and make sure it works inside this test and then we'll then we'll tinker with the channel parameters up here above so the first thing I wanna do is come down here and just simply click on the test channels button. It comes up immediately and it's highlighted an area and it says error, an identifier or a constant or a symbol is unknown. The AIM Ray Studio software is very, very specific on the, the channel naming that you've used in your data versus the channel naming in the equation. And when I say it's specific on the name, I, not only is it specific on the actual channel name, but any spaces, any capitalized, letters, any symbols, anything that you might have, it has to match exactly what's in your data. But we get a kind of a cool little shortcut here that once it's identified this error, we can come up into what we call the identifiers, which is really the channels of data that are available in your, in your data. And I'm gonna go down and search for my lateral G sensor trace, which is in this case, GPS underbar lat ACC. And if I just double click it in this list, it's gonna actually uh, replace the wrong value. So I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna find my GPS lateral acceleration right here, and I'm just gonna double click on that value. And you'll notice now that it's actually put the square root of GPS you know, uh, lateral ACC squared. And then I'm gonna click on this test channel again, and let's see if, it, see if the, the, the equation is correct as far as our, our channel names. And again, it comes up and it says ACC longitudinal Gs. That channel is not in my list, right? So, so now I'm going to double click on my longitudinal acceleration channel that I do actually have in my data. And now I'm going to click on test channel one more time. And now what it comes up and says is, okay, the formula has been correctly interpreted. Okay, so now we know the formula is working. We're going to double check it in the data here in a minute, but, but uh, we know it's there. Okay, now that the next thing we should do is go up here to our channel parameters and let's tweak these because and we'll go over each of the values each of the boxes real quickly but first is the unit of measure when you're working with gsum in this particular case you want to put the unit that, that it is right so in this case it, it, it's a g-force so i'm just going to put g and it, it, it just matches what we've got for our laterals and longitudinals you can see the channel names right here that's all we're doing with this g and this unit of measure box is matching and creating this uh uh, this identifier over here on the left edge. It's unit of measure. The next thing is full scale and zero and zero scale. What is what these two values are doing for us is creating a. Uh, let me pull this over just a little bit. It's creating this scaling values right here every time you open the channel. Yes, you can rescale it later, but if we are, if we kind of know what the values are going to be, let's just do them in this area so they always open up scale the way that you want them. And in this case, tip, a GSUM channel is, is always a positive number. There is no negatives. So uh, the zero scale, I'm just going to put to zero. 
And then the full scale, depending on your car or your cart or your, your, your race vehicle, what, what the amount of Gs are so it scales about right. In this case, most people's case, and, and certainly in the case we're looking at here with a production road race car, uh, I'm going to put a, a two. So that's kind of where it's at. And then we can do our sampling rate. That's how often it calculates this new math channel it's gonna do. Um, we're gonna do it 10 times per second. Uh, the filter, we can actually smooth it out and filter and, and take away any sharp edges, but our GPS channels are not all that noisy. So we're gonna leave the filter at zero. And then decimal figures, this is how many, how many places to the right of the decimal place we're gonna actually show. Your choices are zero, one, two, or three, and two is uh, is a good number because our laterals and longitudinal g's are already being projected with with two two places to the right of the decimal place. So, so I'm going to leave that at two. Okay. So now that I've got these kind of figured out, I've renamed it already a little bit earlier. I named it to g sum, and uh, so let's uh, let's go ahead and and and, uh, and and go ahead and click on the OK button and let's apply it. And what has happened is it, it goes through your data and it created this new math channel, just called GSUM. And, what, uh, and, and places it over here in your list of channels. And here it is down here at the bottom. Often it'll take math channels and automatically place, those, place them to the bottom of the list. Um, here's a little trick for that. Uh, I'm gonna bring, I, wanna, I would love to have it right here below my lats, lateral Gs and longitudinal Gs. So I'm gonna hit my sort channels button and I'm gonna go down to that GSUM at the bottom and I'm gonna move it to the top. And then I'm gonna move it down by clicking on the move down button a few times and I'm gonna put it right in my list right here by the other two that help create it, the Latin longitudinal Gs. I've now got a G sum right there. Let's apply an exit. And now my G sum is over here in my list right where I just told it to be. And let's go ahead and turn it on and let's see how it, uh, how it looks. Okay, so here is the G sum channel. Now it's in blue, we can make it whatever color we wish. But this is the sum of your lateral Gs and your longitudinal Gs, a, a tool that uh, often drivers will use uh, when they're studying their data to see how smooth they are turning in and how they transition from braking and you know, trail braking up to the maximum Gs in the corner, and then how they open their hands and, and start applying throttle. That's what really the G sum is about. We'll talk about that in a, in a future video. But now I've got it. And here it is, and you know maybe we make these other ones a little bit smaller by just grabbing this, these bars in between. And our G sum is down here. Um, you know, looks like a max G sum here about 1.20. If you do the same thing and find that that 1.20 is not quite enough, maybe I should scale this down to maybe 1.50 to the max, right? Instead of the zero to two that I did. Let's go ahead and let's adjust it real quickly. Go right to the math channels dialog icon. It opens up the box. Uh, we'll make sure we're in the, the test, but it opens up there. It opens up that test, that math channel. It's the only one I've got. Let's, instead of two, let's do 1.5. Okay, and then let's click on okay. You'll notice that this thing now scales real quickly. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that GSUM channel. So our next step is, yes, it's working for this test, but you don't wanna have to go through those steps every time you open up the next test or open up even an old test. You, what you want is this GSUM channel all fine-tuned for your data to open up on every test you ever open on, on your computer in Ray Studio 2 analysis. So the next step is, let's go back into our math channel function. Now I've built this channel. I am just super, super happy with all of the different things that I've set up. The math channel is correct. So what I wanna do is I wanna take this GSUM channel and I wanna add it into my little cut copy paste box. Then I wanna go right back to my general tab and I'd like to, I, I click on the bottom one, so it adds it to the bottom, and I'm gonna click on the paste button in under the general tab. I've now got a new channel in my list of all of my general, to, you know, kind of think of it as a global. It, you, these general, under the general tab, the math channels can be applied to any test you have open and store ones that you don't wanna use in some of the tests you're using. So, uh, so this is the general tab. Now it's in here, there's one more function, and it's got all the settings we just did, right? And uh, but there's one more function in this channel that has not been on the, uh, on the when we were looking at it under the, the, the test set session, the session tab. And that is this one right here. There's one more here. It says automatically insert into files. That is added when you get to the general tab. So what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and, and click on that automatically add insert into files, automatically insert into files while in the general tab. 
if you have a bunch of other tests previously that have used a, a GSUM channel you've built in the past with the same name, and you want to overwrite those with this new fine, more fine-tuned stuff, you can actually also click on overwrite channels with the same name. You, your call on whether or not that's important to you if you want to uh, want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and leave that off for this particular one. And then I'm going to click on OK. And now we, we now have, not only in the test we have open right now, we have our GSUM channel that we can now begin to, to do our analysis with. But we also have our, our math channel is going to be added to any test we now we open from now on because we have taken that same math channel and automatically insert into all files from then forward. So I'm going to cancel out of that. So that is the um, that is the the basics of how to create a math channel, how to test it, do it inside of a of, a, of an open test that you have that's going to work for you, get it all fine tuned, tweaked, working exactly like you want. Then you cut you, you copy it back into the general tab and then you add the automatically insert into files. That's the best way to do these and, and make sure that these math channels work for you. It'll work for all things. This is just the GSUM, um, GSUM example. Does that answer that for you, Joe, and get you up to speed? No, that, that's perfect. That's exactly what I was needing because obviously I just, I was not adding it. I was building it and I put it with the GPS, but I wasn't adding it back to the general to, uh, to make sure that it kept building, it kept being in my, at my general tab and, and would exactly. pick up every single time. So that Perfect. helps out a lot. I do appreciate it, Roger. Perfect. And I appreciate you let, allowing us to record this and, and share it with other people. So thank you very much, Joe. And if you need anything else, make sure you give us a buzz back. Thank you. Thank you. You have a great day. You too.